Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Abu Bertilio K65. Here again, guys, as usual. And today we'll be reacting to a video. Uh it says Candice Owens Q and A. Um crazy liberals and Black Lives Matter. Guys, this will be interesting because uh, I've been seeing a couple of these videos around and I like okay, let me check them out. So guys, without wasting much time, let's get right into today's video. As a non-binary person, what do you have to tell me about my identity? Because I know for a fact I'm not confused. Okay, next question. Great statement. That's a statement. That's a statement. Okay, you know your identity. You're not confused. Congratulations, sweetheart. Thank you very much for your statement. Hi, how are you? Hi, I was wondering where you got your um, f statement, your statistic about people who transition, detransition, as well as the, that you are infertile after transitioning. Because yeah. I myself take hormones, I do testosterone injections, mm -hmm. and I've gone through a lot of doctors, and none of them told me that was true. Okay, so on my podcast, I actually cite all the sources. If you look up my name and my podcast, you can, I mean, it's in so many articles. And also, as I said, sexchangeregret.org actually lists all of these statistics with their sources. Um, so obviously, I don't, I, I can't give you a hyperlink as I'm standing on the stage, but you can definitely find it on my podcast, and you can find it on sexchangeregret.com. Thank you for the question. That was, I think, the first question we got there. Hi. Um, according to Britannica, the definition of the nuclear family has expanded with the advert of same-sex marriage. Children in nuclear families may be couples biological or adopted offspring. Does this mean that the merch you sell supporting you know, nuclear families means that you support trans couples adopting, gay couples adopting, and spreading this rhetoric that you yeah. talk about? So you're talking about the expansion of definition. So right now they've expanded the definition of woman to include biological males. This gets back into what I was saying earlier about the left's controlling linguistics and just pretending that, okay, a nuclear family can now be two trans parents um, that are adopting a child. That is not the nuclear family unit that I am talking about. Um, I believe that I am talking about marriage between a male and a female, which naturally and biologically produces children. Uh, so no, I do not take that new updated definition of what it means to be a woman or what it means to be a nuclear family. Thank you for your question, though. Hi. Hello. My question is a little bit of a different speed. Uh, earlier today, you mentioned uh, Patricia Colors or somebody from the BLM movement, and you said that her only qualifying factors for speaking about different things and issues was because she was black. And during the White House hearing about white supremacy, you was mm -hmm. on that. And a question was asked whether white supremacy is a threat or not. And your only qualification to speaking on that was being black. So what do you say to people that say I, they're being a hypocrite? Yeah, so I didn't say on this stage that Patrice's only qualification was being black. I said that people gave her tens of millions of dollars, had no idea where it was going to go, and were happy to do it because she was pirating. She just kept saying Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter. It was stupid. They lost their money. Bad investment. Oh, well, too bad, so sad. Um, regarding qualifications to speak on what's harming black America, you just have to be able to examine actual statistics, right? Are you, are you telling me, would you honestly say that when you walked into this room today, you were afraid that white supremacy was going to kill you? I ask this to black people, to be honest. Are you afraid that a Klansman is going to come down the, down the street on horseback and pick you up? Be honest. Um, I'm not, I'm personally not afraid. Okay, but. so that's it. So when I was speaking at the congressional testimony, I was saying, my experience being black in America, I don't know any black people that are fearful to walk down the street because they think a Klansman's gonna come get them, right? But I can list you tons of black people that grow up in poverty, that grow up in the hood, that grow up around gang culture that are fearful when you examine black on black crime rates. When you, when I was just talking about illiteracy rates, I said that I could list a hundred things the black community is suffering from today before I got to white supremacy, and yet the focus and the emphasis in the school system has been to brainwash us to believe that white people want to kill us around every single corner, and I think that that's a harmful ideology because it doesn't allow us to actually focus on the things that we're suffering from. You know, number one, I would say, is, is father absence. We need to get our families back together. We have to stop letting the government raise us. Um, I do believe, I, I agree with some of the things you just said, but 
at the end of your point, you just mentioned a father absence and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, and studies are actually shows that black men who are actually in their home participate with their children more than any other race. Yeah. So great. So what do you what you just said is a fallacy then? No, 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 no. I'm talking about when there's not a black father in the home, right? So every natural ill follows in the black community. So when you separate the black family, if you look at statistics between black families that are together and white families that are together, the poverty rate, I mean, it, they're, they're both doing well. You're, it's a two point difference between white and black families. When you remove and you break down the black family, it's unbelievable, right? It's a pathway to prison. It's a pathway to illiteracy. So I'm only talking about broken down black families. I'm not saying when the black family unit is together. That brings us back to the Winslows, Family Matters, and the greatest show that was ever on television. I do want to get some more people. I want to get some more people. Thank you so much for your question. Wow, I really um, I love how eloquent and how fast and snappy and how well informed he, he is, you know, and like he knows her on you, and it's just wonderful. Like statistics, and like literally has an answer for every question being asked. I want you to know your take on this. Do you agree with her views? Or do you agree with her opinion? Well, with me, I, I believe um, when a family is together, especially, um, and with the blacks, I, I I believe we, you know. Let me check that again. Oh, uh, this is quite informative, and so far I see. I agree with most of the things she said, but um, um, when a family, especially the black families, together, I see there's low rates where the children, the children transition properly. Like you know, they have a figure putting them through in life, you know, compared when the uh, father is absent, you know, like when a single parent or a single um, a mother raising a child, like with statistics, you see most of them join gangs and all that and all that. I'm not saying being raised by a single mother is bad or you must definitely end up um, in prison or doing something illegal. But let's look at, um, let's look at, with statistics, children who are with both parents uh, like end up doing much more better. Especially how the family tend to um, be at a better position than others. Uh, so far, let me know what you think about um, some of her, her, um, her opinions or her takes on this, guys. Let's continue. <laughs> First of all, uh, hi. Hi. First of all, thank you for coming to the campus. Uh, second you. of all, I was wondering if you could speak a little bit more to your faith. Um, as a Christian myself, I know you're a Christian. Um, I saw the video you put up uh, about the Christian debate with your husband and Allie B. Mm -hmm. Stucky. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about your faith and how that's kind of inspired you. Yeah. So, uh, hmm. well, you know then that I am sort of in between a rock and a hard place right now. I am Protestant. My husband is Catholic. Um, I'm looking more at the Catholic faith for a lot of different reasons. Um, first and foremost, because I, I do believe that males lead the household, and so my children are being raised Catholic right now. Um, and so currently at our house, we go to two different churches, which is not ideal, but for hol holidays, we go to the Catholic church. I was raised by my grandfather. He was by the book, uh, when I say in terms of the Bible, the reason why he was never invested in um, secularism of any sort is because he thought that all of it was the devil. He was like that devout of a Christian. He didn't celebrate any holidays um, and really kept to really just his faith and his family. And so I always say that I was very immersed in scripture when I was a child and then I very much resented it once I got into school because it wasn't cool to be a person that read the Bible. It still isn't cool to be a person that has faith, especially if you're on a college campus. It's something that is looked down upon. And it's actually one of the pillars of leftism that I wish I had talked about tonight is atheism, which was also crucial to Marxist beliefs. They, you were not allowed to have faith if you lived in a socialist or a communist society uh, because they wanted the government to become your God. They wanted you to believe in nothing else but the government. And you're seeing that take place today as atheism is being encouraged. It's a pleasure to meet you. I've been Hi. wanting this for a while. So my name is Joshua. I am from Brentwood, New York. You guys should Google Joshua Chan, Brentwood, New York. Great person. I'm great. Um, anyway, so just it's about health. I want to switch to healthcare. 
my favorite topic in the world. I love What's health. that? Healthcare. Healthcare. Okay. Great. Ms. Owens, I'd Disaster. like to begin by underscoring the importance of healthcare as a fundamental right. Many Americans, including working class white, black, Hispanic, conservatives, believe mm -hmm. that everyone should have access to quality healthcare without financial barriers. Additionally, as conservatives also prioritize fiscal responsibility, it's worth noting that the United States spends more money on healthcare than any developed nation, mm -hmm. yet lags behind in health outcomes. It's, yep. a, it's a situation where it seems like we're paying too much and not getting enough in return. Conservative, and this is the question now. Conservative healthcare policies have often emphasized individual choice and market-based solutions. Mm -hmm. However, it's, oft, it's been observed that private health insurance companies often prioritize profit margins over patient care and can lead to yeah. administrative efficiencies. In contrast, universal healthcare systems as seen in many developed countries not only ensure that healthcare is a human right for all, but also achieve a greater cost effectiveness and efficiency. Yeah. From a moral and fiscal standpoint, it's a compelling argument to eliminate the middleman, reduce administrative costs, and negotiate lower drug prices to make healthcare more accessible and affordable for all Americans. Yeah. Lastly, no one in this room likes their health insurance company. No one. Yeah. Essentially they, 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 especially when the health insurance companies deny care. People like their doctors. Okay, okay, I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. Last question, sorry, sorry. Okay, so, uh, how can conservatives health, conservative health care policies yeah. align with these moral principles of equity and compassion to ensure that everyone can access health care without financial hardship? Okay, and okay, 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 okay. Uh, yeah. We're going to do two, yeah, more, right. two more questions after this, maybe? Okay, that's a long one. Two more, guys, I'm sorry, we're not going to be able to get to all of you. Um, so, First and foremost, the healthcare system is an absolute disaster. I have an entire episode where I sat down with someone and discussed this. Um, people wrongly believe that what's currently happening is our, our healthcare in America is an example of capitalism in the free markets. It absolutely is not. It is the exact opposite. Um, the fact that you walk in to a, a clinic, you don't know what anything costs. You're essentially blindfolded. You go to the hospital and then you get a magical bill and they say, oh, that Tylenol that you had, we didn't tell you it cost $400 for one tablet is, is just completely wrong. America is not an example of free markets and being able to actually choose. Um, so that is that is the first problem, is that the bureaucracies, everything behind it just needs to completely die. If we actually had a free market solution to healthcare, and it's interesting because I'm married to someone that's from the UK, where yes, they do have government-sponsored healthcare be the NHS, but it's a disaster and they're all able to pay privately and they're able to compete and give people the lowest, the lower price. It, it's phenomenal. So an example of that that Charlie Kirk always gives is LASIK surgery. Back when LASIK surgery was being covered by insurance, it was astronomical, the price to get your eyes fixed. And then insurance said, we'll no longer cover it. We consider it to be cosmetic. And now you can get your eyes fixed with LASIK for like $3,000. So it went from being $25,000 per night to $3,000 because they allowed competition. So when health insurance companies were actually removed from the equation, it then became a free market environment and doctors were going, okay, I'll compete and here's how much I'm willing to do it for. So all of that needs to be disrupted so that doctors can actually compete for our dollars. And I think the health insurance companies are an, an, an absolute scam. And I hope that it collapses in the near future. So I'm trying to get two more questions. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I get it. But health, it's an important topic, so I'm glad you brought it up. Hi. Um, so you mentioned earlier about the importance of reading and how that helps people be more enlightened and speak um, and think more freely. What do you think about that um, when we're thinking about book bans happening in states like Florida? Um, so I want to be careful uh, because now we're getting a lot of books and I'm not sure that they are the books that should be in classrooms like White Fragility, which they're you know passing around, which is just really state topics that are being implanted into people's head. Um, I'm talking about, you know, true education, like people actually learning hard academics and not fluffy ideologies. Um, but the, what book ban are you talking about when they're banning like CRT? Uh, I believe there's been a variety of books um, related to... But they're to not banning you from buying them. They're saying we're not going to have them in the school system. Uh, yes, at school, yeah, libraries, totally fine. and it's also with LGBTQ plus books and related topics. For kindergartners, yeah. I, I think sexuality and uh, little five-year-olds don't mix. Okay, that's one insightful video. Uh, she's just awesome. The way she is vast in the things. Um, um, questions being thrown at her and life, it's just wonderful. Life gets informative, insightful, blends a couple of things. And yeah, let me know what you think about this, your opinion, and you agree with most of the things she's saying because, like, what she's saying, Christianity, faith, um, skin color you know a whole lot like it's just beautiful to to lend us so i've been following her on some of her videos on her podcast and like she's good like she's really good so guys let me know what you think about 
this particular video if you agree with what everything she's saying or not guys and if you have any other video you want me to react you can drop us in the comment section and definitely do justice to that guys see you coming away next time bye
Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Abu Katsuri, okay? And today, we're running right through into today's video. Like, it's been an interesting um, couple of videos I've been reacting to because it's kind of recommended to me by my friends. And uh, like, oh, check these videos out. Like, since you, you're looking at a lot of um, theories, looking about a lot of concepts and things happening around the world. And like, so I said, why not? Let me check them out. So I've been quite introduced to Charlie Kirk and Candace Owens. So, um, and to this video, I'll be reacting to Charlie Kirk crushes to his small college students. Ah, uh, best debate compilation. It's a long one, um, 17 minutes, almost 18 minutes, 17, 37 seconds. Guys, let's get right into this video. Let me know. If you have any other videos you want me to react to or if you find it interesting and how to improve this channel without wasting much time let's get into today's video i saw some people with the shirt that says school college is a scam it's a it's quite the, the statement and could you elaborate a little bit more on that do you sure. believe college is is a scam yeah uh, half this audience uh if you guys get a job will end up getting a job that doesn't require a college degree okay then so they we get a job that requires a college degree so, yeah, so any business that has a 50% rate of a customer being scammed will be shut down by the federal government for disenfranchising their customers. You went to Chili's, like, hey, 50% chance that our fries are going to give you food poisoning. So if you look at college more than just getting a job, but more as a educating the population, would you say that's a scam? Well, it depends on what you think college is and what it's become. Secondly, 41% of people that enter college don't graduate. The dropout rate's insanely high. That's true. Third, I mean, what exactly is being taught here? It's a great question. I mean, are you learning about the beauty of Western civilization and reading the Federalist Papers of Hamilton and Madison and Jay? And do you get a positive view of America or do you spend time on postmodernism of Michel Foucault and Jacques Derrida and Gene Stefanik and Derek Bell? I'd uh, say more networking. Oh, networking. Yeah. Okay. So hey, wait, 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 before we go dive deep into it, what's your definition of a scam? Uh, where a, a serious proportion of your customers are not given the value proposition that they pay for. Education, right. Which they're not getting. Yeah. You're saying, so therefore... In well, that's the question. You come here to get uh, educated, you guys are going from the wrong thing. This is just a glorified credentialing exercise. Yeah, and that's what you're paying for, but therefore it's oh, not... Oh, okay, so, uh, so we're not, it's not education. You're just paying for a piece of paper so you can get a job. And education, I mean... Oh, is it education? So are, are you, It is education, sorry. But education, I'll, I'll, I'll what, does that even, what does that mean to you? Um... Resources, learning how to work, learning how um, to um, move around a professional workforce. Um, you need to go to that, college to learn that. Yes, yes, I'd say. I so. think you're being you're being scammed, man. I don't, Take it from someone who didn't go to college. You don't need any of that stuff. Yeah. You would, need, you, would you say a doctor would need a college degree? Well, of course, but that, the vast majority of kids here aren't studied to go to, to become a doctor. How many engineers are in here? Yeah. Okay. So, how many people that are studying so social or liberal sciences? Social sciences. Woo. Yeah, fair amount. Okay. okay. But it's a personal choice. Therefore, the vast majority of kids that go to college are social sciences, psychology, communications. Mm -hmm. About only 18 to 20 percent are studying engineering. And you say they shouldn't go to college. Well, it all depends. Again, it depends on what you're studying, exactly. why you're there. But you don't. Uh, this idea that engineering, you need a four-year degree. You could also just learn to code in six months and work for Salesforce and earn 180 thousand dollars a year. Yeah. Exactly. It's, uh, it's yes, it is true. They, 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 coding, hard, Charlie. You have to go to college to learn to code? Not necessarily. Okay, that's my point. I'm not saying it's easy, you just need to go to college. Secondly, what does a manager of a Walmart, a Walmart Supercenter make a year? Anybody know? What? It's $400,000 a year. $400,000? Yeah, they don't require, yeah, you guys should just go become a manager of a Walmart, doesn't require a college degree. What does the average plumber make in Scottsdale, Arizona? $115,000 a year. What does the average HVAC technician make in Henderson, Nevada? $75,000 a year. But those don't require college degrees. There are 11 million job openings in this country right now that don't require college degrees. We are oversupplying college. But yet you're here taking advantage of college and college students. Am I taking advantage? Is that what I'm doing? You're taking advantage of the space, or taking advantage of the students, not in a way of like, yeah, intellectually I mean, taking advantage. It, it's it's um, like it's like going to a place to tell people you're being scammed. If you call that taking advantage, then so be it. Yeah, I mean, you're taking advantage as you're taking my time, you're taking everyone's time, well, and you're you're, and, and you're, you're you're volunteering your time it, too. It, it, I, I didn't wait, force uh, you. Okay, yeah. sorry. Yeah, we're we're you're taking okay. our time. We're we're, we're investing enough. our time. I, I do this also in other places than campuses too. So. Yeah, no, but but then you're here, and then you're saying college is a scam. It is. 
uh, half I, of you I, guys I, will end up getting a job where your entire college debt burden means nothing. Yeah. You will get a job that does not require a college degree at all. You're four years wasted. You shouldn't have come here in the first place. Half. Uh, well, I disagree with you. And all right, well, that's fair. I hope cool. you. I hope it's worth have it. Have a wonderful hope, day. All right, thank you. You dropped out of college. And your well, highest community college. Mm. Sorry, your Harper College experience. Yeah, I apologize. Barely was smart enough to make it through community college. Okay, so barely made it through high school. Your too. highest degree level is an honorary doctor's degree from Liberty University. No, that's true. I do have an honorary PhD. Yeah. So essentially, what are your qualifications for arguing that college is a scam, or really any having any economical knowledge at all, when likely the vast majority of the students here know more than you? <laughs> about economics as a whole. Okay, so, uh, no, hold on, it's okay, guys, it's okay. Uh, who is Milton Friedman? Who is Milton Friedman? I have no idea, and it's not important to this conversation. Who, who is Ludwig von Mises? Mm, these are all probably economists, and they're the same, yeah. the same who thing. Who is John Maynard Keynes? That, okay, obviously I know who Keynes is. Oh, obviously, yeah. He's the most famous economist of all well, time. You don't know Milton Friedman? I mean, that's an economist. Okay, how about Murray Rothbard? That's another economist. F.A. Hayek? I don't know who that is. Well, then you just came here and insulted my intelligence. For, you're right, I barely made it through community college because I was too busy, I don't know, starting a national youth movement with hundreds of thousands of members. Hey, hold on, though. Hold on, and, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Employing hundreds of people, raising hundreds of millions of dollars, yes. having a top 10 most popular podcast, sure. and reaching tens of millions of people online every day. Sure, but, hold on. but you're also what calling all of your constituents idiots no, by I've saying they participate that, in a scam. They, you, their hold shirts on a right there. I'm College calling the scam. institution a scam. So then, I never why, insulted okay, the so intelligence. Then, I just so had then, 10 people come up and we had warm conversations. So you asked, what are my qualifications? I'm a job creator, entrepreneur, autodidact. Do you know what that word means? Self-taught. Mm. Yeah, uh, self-taught. You know, you should probably learn that word if you're gonna oh, okay, come up and okay. insult other people's intelligence. Hey, hey, hey. So autodidacticism is what Leonardo da Vinci was. You don't have to go to college to be wise. You don't have to go to college to be intelligent. I read 100 books a year. I visit over 150 hey, colleges. I'm not saying hey, you're unintelligent. I'm just, I'm just last, saying you lack qualifications. Question. Well. Are you a New York Times bestseller? Of course not. I'm okay, in college. Got it. So I'm just trying. What are my qualifications? I have published books, read lots of books, dialogued with a lot of people, and instead of asking what my qualifications okay. are, Yet can you name one thing I've ever wrong. said? That, hold on. Name one thing I'm wrong about. You literally just you just now incorrectly cited the difference between socialism and communism. While you how, yourself, how so? What did I how do? How so? You claimed that Russia was socialist. Russia the, the was Soviet never socialist. The Soviet Union was socialist. No, so, no, it was a communist nation. There is a significant difference well, between wh the two. Why did Lenin say that socialism is the gateway to communism? And he was self-described uh, socialist Lenin, in his private Lenin, treatise and documents in the Russian Revolution. Lenin was he overtaken over by Stalin. Stalin. Hold on a second. No, so, Lenin died, and then Stalin was his successor. Yes. So, but Lenin himself said, "Quote." That socialism is the introductory phase to communism. Did okay, he not say so that? then the vast majority of people, when they're referring to communist Russia, are referring to Stalin's rule over Russia. That was a communist rule that turned into a fascist rule later on. Okay, so but what 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 thinker was deified in Soviet Russia? That what had, thinker was deified? Yeah, what, yes, Marx. Oh, and and what 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 book did Marx write? Yes, he wrote Capital, which and he also wrote the, the, communist, know, the manifesto. communist manifesto. Who was his co-author? Who was co-author? Angles. Yeah, angles. angles. Good. I'm glad college is really paying off for you. Hey. So, um, so no, hey. but it's okay. It's fine. He comes up here and insults my intelligence. What are your qualifications? Doesn't even know the co-author of the Communist Manifesto or Das Listen. Kapital. But no, let me just again, this, so again. I, I, but I, does but, my lack of knowledge on that mean that I have no, no knowledge you again? Up, you is that the same thing? Insulted me, and you, you came up here, guns a blazing, man. And let me just ask again. What did I say that was wrong? I said that. Under the generally agreed upon definition of communism and socialism, which are interchangeable terms, one is a more harsh degree of the other, is that the elimination of the family, the elimination of private property, and the deprivation of basic human rights, such as right to speech, right to assembly, and right to worship, how is that not a good definition of communism and socialism? Because that explains the fascism better. Well, but... In the Communist Manifesto, Marx said, quote, we are here to destroy the nuclear family and eradicate the family because it was the original oppressive, tyrannical structure. He said religion is the opiate of the masses and that private property must be eradicated. I have just now documented all three of those with evidence back to original source documents. 
And then in practice, Russia did all those three things when they were the Soviet Union. So but, where am I but wrong? Then, but, then, but then at the same time, if you claim that those are all negative things, then why do you practice certain things in, those, in the doctrines that you just stated? Well, I, I, I'm not trying to take people's stuff away. Mm. Nor, I want people to have bigger families, and I want churches to remain open. Yeah, but the thing is, so is your main practice? no, but your main, your biggest thing, your biggest point that everyone here is for, is that you're a potential white supremacist. So, oh. how, how, what evidence do you have that I'm a racist? I was just literally watching a video of you talk about how talking about whiteness as a whole, wh talking about whiteness as a concept, okay? And you were trying to explain how white privilege doesn't exist. Correct, it doesn't. You are a white man. How do you know? Uh, because I have eyes. Because you have eyes. That's and not I a description. Reason. So what can a black person do that I can't do in America? Or what can a black versa? person do? What can I so do a black person can't do? I let's say. think of some history right here. Let's go no, to no, the no, history no, of no, redlining. I, I don't need a history. I don't need yes, listen. No, no, you're talking about you white You do privilege. need a history lining. Clearly no, you I, need a history I know your lesson. talking points better than you do, and I've read all those li the literature that you have. I've, I've probably forgotten history more about the literature. The history affects the present day as well, and you know that's true. If you went to college, you would know. Well, hold on a second. But well, let, let me. Let me. So, so then why are you wearing the college of the scam shirt? Drop out. Well. Well, because you could. You so could, it's because you don't believe your own beliefs, and that's what I'm well, saying. Well, you could you can admit something's a scam and still get through it. That's why he's wearing it. Okay. You well, could be, then you why? Could, you could feel like you're getting ripped off by an airline but and anyways, still want to get to New York. But that's not what we're talking okay? about anymore. Like you could still you could you're like I'm getting ripped off by a thousand dollar ticket, but you still get on the airplane. Like it doesn't make you a hypocrite. It means that the people are ripping you off, and a lot of you are getting ripped off. But no. So as far as white privilege, just with, without the history lesson of you know Jim Crow, segregation, imperialism, colonialism, slavery, all the stuff that I know that you're going to say, but just in concretely in America today, what can a white person do that a black person can't do? Black applicants to jobs are 50% less likely to get jobs with they have a black sounding that, name. That, that's not even close that to being true. That's not even that close to being accurate. true. That is like, a literal. Like, that, in yes, fact, it's yes, the opposite. Is, I'm not going to argue your oh. lived experience. I'm not going to, no. no. See, now I'm you not. have to listen to him under your rules of because course. a black person is going to say am, you're wrong. I am. He can say I'm wrong. I've, I know I Come on up your, to the mic. I know I read, I read your... Uh, my name's I, Keemon Dixon. I have a really black name. Please no. tell me how 50% of my internships have been denied when I've worked for Senator Mike Lee, Mayor Trent Stack, Speaker Mike Schultz. Hold on. I've worked for a congressman, Burgess Owens. I've actually worked on his campaign. I've worked on the campaigns of John Huntsman Jr. Please tell me how my black experience and my black man has not given me shit. Go ahead. So... You create a company that's like like close to being a fascist and then like okay. well, how am i sorry let, let's go through this how am i a fascist no. dude like you can, you can you name one thing i believe that's fascist um you believe that like you are <sighs> But I'm I just such want, a bad okay. fascist. I let the people who disagree just, and open mic to talk to me for two hours uninterrupted. Just, okay, I'm right. an awful fascist. I'm more like a free speech liberal the 1970s, not a fascist. But I just want to say, Turning Point USA is a evil company that was funded by thousands of fracking companies, and that well, just no, it's, it's not thousands, but we do have some frackers that give us money. But yeah, have, and then we, we all have, all it is is making the rich from more. Fascist. Rich. Fascism to fracking. That's but, all it is. That's but, all it is. Okay, again, I'm happy to have a debate. I can see you're getting kind of fired up. I'm sorry. So, but what, why Why are we evil? Like, we're, we're having a nice discussion. Because all of a sudden, you you're, want, I you're calling me like, because a Because it seems like you just want the rich get even more rich. Like, we, we haven't talked about the rich at all. I mean, so do you, you don't even know my positions on this stuff at all. The wealthiest people absent Elon Musk are all on the left. Jeff Bezos, George Soros, Mark Benioff. Mm -hmm. Mark Elon Zuckerberg, on the Lorene blood? Powell Jobs, on the left, yes. Expl can you name one tech CEO outside of Elon Musk that is a conservative? Um, I personally think, let me think. Peter Thiel? Peter Thiel? Yeah, that's one. That's one. Um, Larry Page, Google, on the left, worth $120 billion. Sergey Brin, Google, $130 billion on the left. If, Lorraine, okay. Lorraine if Powell Jobs, Mackenzie Bezos, Jeff Bezos. If they're on the left, what has they done that was like, quote unquote, to do the left stuff? Well, okay, so Larry Page gives money to left-wing NGOs all the time. Like, if you're on the left, I don't think you will ever be this rich. Well, they are. You know why? Because the but left because is, they're not. No, no because the they're thing, not. The left is a scam. 
The left uses How is this? Let yeah. me tell you why. It's a good question, actually. The left uses people like you that think that, oh, we're going to fight the rich. Well, they protect their oligarchy. While you guys have to keep on working hard and never own anything, when we conservatives are the ones that actually want to restore the American middle class and bring jobs back to this country. How would you restore? Hold, let me finish. Let me finish. The, the left uses people like you every day. Who is funding? Dude, I have never seen okay. a leftist... Again, organization come to campus spreading their propagandas. Well, because the whole university is a leftist organization no, it's spreading not. propaganda. No, it's not. It's liberal. Left, there's a, there yeah, is but, a clear-cut difference but, between but a it, leftist and a liberal. Please you're, make you're that You're coming right. after this in a good way because every major powerful wealthy person in the country, over $100 billion in net worth, with the exception of one person, Elon Musk, is on the cultural left and gives money to the left. And you guys give them a free pass. Because you think that we're fascists, when in reality, we're the ones that are actually fighting to destroy the oligarchy the most. All right, last question. Last point. Last question. Um, let's say, so you do want to fight for the American middle class. And that, that's how, my, yes. Okay, that's how, my, how, how, how does free, freer the market, like, helps with the well, middle again, class? Well, I, I want, again, I want precision in free markets, but I... How, want, does, uh, how does free market support the middle again, class? Again, I'm not puritanical, but I think that generally more choices are a good thing. I think that generally supporting entrepreneurs is positive. But I, I think that mass immigration is really bad for American workers. There's no mass immigration. Well, well first of all, how many people are... Wow. Um, like... Well, you're right. What, there is mass, mass invasion. But, um, but how, how many people are coming across the southern border every day? Yeah, I don't know. But like, don't know, it's I'm not, actually generally curious. Can you guess? Okay, um, on what time frame? Every day. Every day? 500? Yeah, it's, it's at a low point, it's at 10,000 right now. It was 15,000 last month. So what is that annualized? <laughs> Let's play that out. A lot. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. So that's mass immigration, right? How many green cards do we give out every year? Probably a lot. Yeah, a lot. About yeah. 1.2 million. Well, right? what's wrong with giving out green cards? I'm not saying they wrong. No, you okay. said there's no mass migration. So I'm just okay. trying to tell you, we do have mass migration, okay. right? We have 3 million on the southern border, and then we have a million green cards, mm -hmm. right? That's 4 million a year, right? Which is effect basically bigger than most U.S. states. Now, everything comes with a cost. When you have mass migration, you're going to get lower wages. But that means you're going to disenfranchise American workers. What Are you studying computer science? Yeah, I am. Okay, so you're an American born, I'm guessing, American raised? I don't, I don't want to assume. I wasn't, but okay. I moved to the U.S. Okay, well, you're an American now, I guess. I don't know, maybe. Yeah, I am. Student visa? Okay, you're going to ha now have to compete. Uh, you're kind of proving my point, but that's a separate issue. You're now going to have to compete against foreign labor for your computer science jobs. I think we have a moral obligation to American-born workers to give them preference and priority and restrict the labor supply so that our computer science majors can have higher wages, not to have suppressed wages so some tech CEO can uh, bring in a bunch of Indians and suppress their, no, not against Indians, but just, you know, bring down their wages. Personally, I just think that, like, if you came to America and then receive a green card, I think you get, you get to work however you want. Like, okay, I, yeah, think, I, I think, think that American-born citizens should be And then there be shouldn't given. be a priority because they are American citizens. Well, that, that's as long what, as you're that's where we're different. Citizen. I actually think you must have a priority to your own citizens or else you don't have a government. You have something else. If you don't have a priority to your own people, I don't know what you have. You have a colony, not a country. You're just a big economy. Mm -hmm. and, that, that, and that's fine if that's your position. By the way, your position is held by the ruling elite where I think that we should have a country, not just a colony, where the American-born citizens should be given preference over foreigners. Nothing against foreigners, I think they're nice people, but the Americans should be given first preference. And by the way, any sane country believes that. We're like the only country in the world that says, and certain European countries, come on in and take whatever you want. Wow, wow, I, I, I agree mostly with his statement. For someone who is self-taught, he's very impressive. You know, I struggled in college, dropped out um, even in high school, and like this vast, read almost 100 books a year, authored so many books, dude, and the way he threw it at them, like handled every single person who came at him different way, answered perfect questions, like you can't even argue and even throw some off balance, like impressive, totally clear. Uh, Kirk, I've heard about him, listening to a couple of his podcasts, but like, big man, big man, like, you know, let me know what you feel about him, 
you are doing most of the things saying drop down in the comment section let's hear your view on most of what he's saying or some of the things he's saying if you have your different views drop down in the comment section if you have any other videos you want me to react to and you drop that in the comment section guys come away next time